2022 meeting of the Board of Estimates is now called to order. Uh, the board will continue to meet in its hybrid format. For those that are with us uh, in person, it, we ask that you please silence all electronic devices uh, and at this time ensure that you're wearing a mask unless you're speaking uh, in the board room. At this time, I would like to turn to our amazing uh, clerk, Ms. Celeste Amato, for any cor corrections, additions, or noted abstentions from today's agenda. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. We have a number of changes and other items to note this morning, so bear with me. I have to do a little bit of reading today. Um, for changes and corrections, on page number 39, we have a correction to Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement Agreement with St. Agnes Hospital. Under the action requested, we'll be replacing the year 2012 with 2022 to correct the start date of the agreement. On page 178, we have an item being added to the agenda, Bureau of Procurement Cooperative Agreement. This is being requested as a walk-on, and I'm going to read that item very quickly. The action requested of the board is to approve and authorize execution of a cooperative agreement with Apple Ford Incorporated, trading as Apple Ford. The period of the agreement um, begins March 1st, 2022. Um, the amount and source of funds is $200,000, and that will come from various account sources. Background explanation, units will be purchased from a competitively bid contract, 001B2600383. The units will replace older equipment in the city's fleet, and it is hereby certified that the above procurement is of such a nature that no advantage will result in seeking, nor would it be practicable to obtain competitive bids. On page 179, item number four, Department of Public Works, Office of Engineering and Construction, we have a notice of letting that is being added to the agenda for contract SC992R. This item is for egg-shaped digester rehabilitation improvements at the Back River Wastewater Treatment Plant. Those bids will be received on September 7th, 2022. On page 180, Baltimore City Department of Health Provider Agreement with Connection Through Life Incorporated Fiscal Agent for the Minority AIDS Initiative. This item is being added to the agenda and I'm going to read the content of that board memo. The action requested of the Board of Estimates is to approve and authorize execution of a provider agreement with Connection Through Life Incorporated. The period of that agreement is March 1st, 2022 through February 28th, 2023. <coughs> The uh, source um, and use of funds, the total fund amount is $13,443,859 from multiple federal sources. Background explanation, Connection Through Life is the fiscal agent for Minority AIDS Initiative and will be responsible for providing the day-to-day -day fiscal administration, contracting and monitoring of provider expenditures to ensure the reasonableness of reimbursements requested by direct service providers and to be in compliance with contractual fiscal requirements. During this term, the department will be responsible for the programmatic services of Ryan White Part A, including the request for proposal, selection of direct service providers, review of programmatic reports, and programmatic monitoring of providers. The purpose of the Ryan White Part A Minority AIDS Initiative program is to improve HIV-related health outcomes to reduce existing racial and ethnic health disparities. And finally, page 181, Baltimore City Health Department Provider Agreement with Connection Through Life Incorporated, again, fiscal agent for the Minority AIDS Initiative is being added to the agenda and that item reads as follows. The board is requested to approve and authorize execution of a provider agreement with the Connection Through Life Incorporated. The period of this agreement is March 1st, 2022 through February 28th, 2023. The dollar amount associated with this action is $1,424,804 from federal sources. And the background explanation, Connection Through Life as a fiscal agent for Minority AIDS Initiative will be responsible for providing the day-to-day -day fiscal administration contracting and monitoring of provider expenditures to ensure the reasonableness of reimbursements requested by direct service providers and to be in compliance with contractual fiscal requirements. During this term, the department will be responsible for the programmatic services of Ryan White Part A, 
including the request for proposals, selection of direct service providers, review of programmatic reports, and programmatic monitoring of providers. The purpose of the Ryan White Part A Minority AIDS Initiative Program is to improve HIV-related health outcomes to re reduce existing racial and ethnic health disparities. We have the following protests today on page 116, item number one, Bureau of Procurement, contract B5000-6466, street tree supply, delivery planting and maintenance, spring and fall 2022. A protest was received from Robert Fulton DeShiel Esquire on behalf of Lawrence Incorporated. A response to protest was received from Baltimore Tree Trust. And on page 118 through 119, item number seven, Department of Transportation, contract number TR17022, Sharp Leadenhall Streetscape, a protest was received from Wright Constable and Skeen LLP on behalf of Civil Construction LLC. We have the following deferrals and withdrawals on the agenda today, page 63 through 87, item number 12 through 24, Bureau of Procurement Reports of Emergency Procurement. These items are being withdrawn at the request of the Acting Chief Procurement Officer. On page 88 through 89, item number 25, Bureau of Procurement, Office Moving Services. This item is being deferred at the request of the comptroller, and I apologize, the, I think the above items Bureau, for Bureau of Procurement are being deferred, not withdrawn, apologies. Um, on page 118 through 119, item number seven, Department of Transportation, contract TR17022, Sharp Leadenhall Streetscape. This item is being deferred at the request of the comptroller. And page 161 through 175, Department of Human Resources, modifications to AM 205-6, AM 204-10, and establishment of AM 210-2. This item is, these items are being deferred at the request of the comptroller. The following items are moving to the non-routine agenda on page 23. Health Department, agreement with Baltimore Medical Systems Incorporated on page 24. Health Department, agreement with St. Ambrose Housing Aid Center, page 25. Health Department, agreement with Baltimore City Board of School Commissioners, page 26. Health Department, agreement with Johns Hopkins University, page 27. Health Department, agreement with Johns Hopkins University, page 28. Health Department, agreement with AIDS Interfaith Residential Services Incorporated, page 29. Health Department, agreement with Sage Wellness Group, LLC, Page 30, Health Department, Agreement with, the, with Black Mental Health Alliance for Education and Consultation Incorporated. Page 89, item number 26, Bureau of Procurement, Background Investigation, contract number B5000-5017. Page 116, item number one, Bureau of Procurement, B5000-6466, Street Tree Supply, Delivery Planting and Maintenance, Spring and Fall 2022. Again, a protest was received from Robert Fulton DeShiel Esquire on behalf of Lawrence Incorporated, and a response to that protest was received from Baltimore Tree Trust. We have the following abstentions for today's agenda. The Honorable Mayor Brandon Scott is abstaining on page 26, Health Department, agreement with the Johns Hopkins University. On page 27, Health Department, agreement with the Johns Hopkins University. And on pages 76 through 77, item number 18, Bureau of Procurement, Report of Emergency Procurement with the Johns Hopkins University. The Honorable President Nick Mosby is abstaining on pages 5 through 10, Baltimore City Council Travel Requests. The Honorable Comptroller Bill Henry is abstaining on pages 5 through 10, Baltimore City Council Travel Requests. Deputy City Solicitor Ebony Thompson has no abstentions today, and Director of Public Works Jason Mitchell also has no abstentions today. And that concludes my notes for today, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, before we move on to um, a motion to approve and adopt the opening statement, um, there is an item that was mentioned, uh, B5000-6466, a street tree supply, delivery, planting, and maintenance spring and fall 2022. This was an item that was originally deferred, um, I believe, by the... Um, at the request and then by the administration and then ultimately this board uh, decided to defer it again because of the representation associated with uh, Lorenz. Um, they're asking to defer it one more time. Uh, I'm going to put the motion out there for us to defer it until uh, the next uh, scheduled board meeting. Um, so I have a motion on the floor. 
Are we okay with deferring? Do we have issues with the administration? Mr. President, uh, we be I believe and the administration believes that we should not defer this. We all understand the issues with uh, the representation who we all know and love very dearly. But uh, with this particular issue and something that we've been already behind in, we think it will have a direct impact on, on city service. Well, Mr. Mayor, we know you have the controlling votes of this board, three out of five, so if we're not deferring, we're not deferring. We'll move on. Uh, with that said, at this time, I will ask a motion to approve and adopt the opening statement as read by the clerk. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, this item is approved um, and the opening statement is adopted. I would now like to direct the board's attention uh, to a memorandum from my office dated June the 27th, 2022. Identify matters to be considered as routine agenda items together with any corrections, additions, abstentions, and no votes that have been noted by our clerk. I will entertain a motion at this point uh, for all items contained on the routine agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And all those opposed, please say nay. Uh, the ayes have it. Routine agenda item is now adopted. The first set of items on a non-routine agenda can be found on the beginning of page 23 and running through page 30. These are a series of provider agreements submitted by the Baltimore City Health Department. It is my understanding that the Comptroller has questions primarily for the department, so we'll start with the Health Department and decide whether to move on uh, as a group to discuss them individually. At this time, I'll ask that the person representing the Baltimore City Health Department uh, or presenting this issue from the administration uh, please step forward uh, to provide us with the background of this information. Yes, good morning. This is Leslie Thompson. Uh, I, I always got to get caught up with this hybrid, so I, I'm looking in front of me. I don't see anybody. And then you, a ghost appears and tells me to look at the screen. So, Ms. Leslie Thompson, uh, the, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Yes, good morning, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, and Honorable Board. Um, these uh, agreements here, we're requesting retroactive approval for these agreements because we could not stop the critical services to this vulnerable uh, population. The reason why they were delayed was due to staffing shortages that we are currently working on as we speak. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. I believe you said the reason for the delay was staffing shortages? Yes, that's Thank correct. You. Thank you. Does that conclude your presentation? That concludes my presentation. Uh, uh, members of, thank you so much. Members of the board, do you have any questions? I, I do. At this time, uh, I would like to uh, yield the floor to our comptroller, Bill Henry. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning, uh, Ms. Thompson. Uh, I, Mr. President, I had requested that these items be put on the non-routine agenda for the same reason that I put multiple grant agreements uh, with DHCD on the non-routine agreement on the non-routine agenda two weeks ago. Um, this is another example of a city agency that has uh, struggled to bring contracts with nonprofit service providers to the board in a timely fashion. Um, of the eight agreements we have before us today, seven have a start day of one year ago, and they expire tomorrow. Uh, my staff did a review of the agreement submitted by the health department, uh, similar to the one that they did for HCD at the June 1st board meeting, and found that uh, for single year grant agreements submitted for board approval since January 2021, it takes an average of 320 days for a grant expenditure, grant payable, or grant award to come to the BOE. So um, I understand that Ms. Thompson laid out that the issue is um, a staffing shortage, but uh, could uh, she go into more detail about what type of additional resources, uh, staffing or otherwise, that the health department needs to improve its performance in this area? And uh, more specifically, how can we as the board support the health department in their efforts to get contracts to service providers on time? Um, basically, uh, we're taking a look at our policies and procedures to uh, try to make things more efficient and more automated. So we're working towards that, as well as our HR department looking strategically at um, ways to make these positions more attractive so that uh, it'll cost uh, people to want to be employed here and, and, and take on those responsibilities. In terms of support, uh, just understanding that 
this is a um, once we get people in there is a learning curve for them to understand what our processes is so that we can get our contracts in place in a timely manner. Okay, so I guess what I'm asking is, is it is the is the staffing shortage that you're describing one where if you can fill the currently vacant positions you feel that that will be sufficient staff resources to get these grants approved in a timely fashion going forward and it's just a matter of getting all of those positions filled correct okay all right thank you the only question i have miss thompson is uh I know you said that you guys are working on a plan. Is there a specific, like, estimated time of uh, completion of that plan that you could come back and communicate to the board? Um, right now, it's, it's really in the emphasy stage of strategizing. Yes. Well, Ms. Thompson, um, I'll, I'll ask just for, from a board perspective, if you could go back to leadership of the health department uh, and then mm -hmm. come back to us. Uh, we would love to hear back from the health department on next steps. You know, obviously these are critical services that are really important mm -hmm. to the citizens of Baltimore. Um, the board does all it can do to ensure uh, that we're keeping the continuity of services as it relates to um, when these things come up to us. But uh, as uh, kind of the motivation of the questions associated with Comptroller Henry, we would like to understand and know that there's a plan in place moving forward uh, so we can kind of get out of the rut of that 320 day mm -hmm. evaluation that he was able to uh, analyze and, and determine. Understood. All right, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Thompson. At this point, are there any other additional questions or concerns from members of this board to the health department? Uh, hearing and seeing none, uh, be willing to entertain a motion. Mr. President, I would move, can we move all eight as a group? I will uh, I would, enjoy to do that. I would move all eight as a group. Yeah. <laughs> Second. Uh, so uh, there's a motion on the floor for us to move all eight as a group. It's been seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Uh, so we, right now we're going to vote on all eight as a group. Is there a motion on the floor? So move. Second. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And all those opposed, please say nay. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, this item is approved, uh, and we will move on to the next item. Now, it's B5050.17. Uh, Madam Clerk, is that included in the eight, or is that separate and apart from the eight? Oh, B5000 is separate and apart. That's I, th th specifically th I thought so, yeah, okay. So the next item that we're going to look at on non routine agenda can be found on page 89, number 26, contract number B5000-5017, background investigation with Kentech Consulting Incorporated. The board is being asked to approve additional funding for the contract to conduct background checks on the prospective hires. The vendor is not currently compliant with city MBE, WBE requirements, but has been in contact with the MBU office to develop a plan um, to become compliant. At this time, I recognize a representative from DHR or Chief Lundy or anyone else from the administration to walk us through this item. Chief Lundy's there. Chief Lundy, are you on? You're on. Oh, Director Herbert. So I, I believe we have Director Herbert from DHR as well as Chief Lundy uh, from the MBU office. Uh, whoever would like to speak on behalf of the administration, please take the floor. I'll, I'll begin. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Comptroller, other distinguished members of the board. My name is Quentin Herbert. I'm the Director of Human Resources. Um, this contract uh, has two components to it. Kentech does uh, background work, some background work for BPD, which is uh, a bit different from what they do for, uh, for the DHR work. Uh, DHR's uh, background checks uh, in the past has, has never had uh, MWBE goals because of the work, the nature and the scope of the work. Um, there is more opportunity um, to divide the work up with respect to what Kentech does for BPD. We have reached out to the vendor and the vendor is working on a, developing a plan and devising a plan to come into compliance. I also think that it's, it's worth noting to this board uh, that Kentech itself uh, is, an, is a minority owned business. Uh, they are not registered with the city. They are registered, however, in another, a number of other cities in there are registered federal MBE. It appears that there was some advice given to them uh, previously by the city that it would not benefit him to 
uh, register as a city MBE. I believe he's working to do that now as well. I'll defer to Mr. Lundy with respect to the conversations that he's had with respect to uh, MWBE compliance. But I will say that from our perspective, the scope of work that is done for DHR is very targeted. Um, there's not really an opportunity to segment that work. They're simply calling the courthouse and verifying the information that they get from the CJIS report. Um, and there's not a lot of room to segment that work. Uh, and with that, I, I would defer to Mr. To, uh, to Chief Lundy. Thank you. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Council President, members of the board, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to go ahead and um, Quentin, uh, Director Herbert is correct regarding this is a dual contract. So we have both BPD and DHR on the contract. So that in and of itself adds some further complexity to us judging the participation and compliance because they're doing work for two agencies. In the past, Kintec has had difficulty uh, with the BPD portion of the contract due to BPD's uh, regional recruiting efforts. They take them out of state frequently. Uh, they're frequently in New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania doing those recruiting efforts. And unfortunately, uh, at the time that Kintec entered into this contract with their subcontractors, uh, they came to an agreement that they were uh, to remain in the local area and that they would not do any traveling for investigative purposes outside of the state. Um, we're working with them to add some additional contractors that would be able to uh, travel uh, to bolster overall participation on the contract, both um, uh, for DHR and for BPD. Uh, the DHR component, as uh, Director Herbert said, is a little bit more challenging in terms of getting participation. It, it's much more just uh, a, a check of records um, than uh, doing out and uh, doing canvassing and um, out of state evaluations. Uh, so we're, and Kintec has been extremely cooperative. Um, there was a change in leadership, obviously, in my office previously, and they had been in uh, communication. Uh, they did follow up with some email correspondence, but didn't uh, properly track their efforts. Uh, they have now communicated those efforts uh, to me and my office, and we are having continuous uh, meetings. We, we do uh, plan on meeting with them again to get some more detail about uh, if they have identified a subcontractor and getting them uh, added to the contract and some additional uh, ways that they can get participation that may not be purely uh, limited to the investigative services uh, that are within the primary scope of the contract. Uh, but I am confident, and, and, and also they are an MBE. Um, they are, um, they have offices uh, uh, throughout the country, and apparently they were advised previously that they should not seek uh, Baltimore certification. Uh, they were relocating uh, to Baltimore prior to the pandemic with an office, and that those plans uh, got somewhat delayed, but they do still intend on um, establishing more concrete operations in the Baltimore area so that they would uh, become eligible uh, in the near future to be certified as an actual uh, city MBE. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lundy and Director Herbert. At this point, I'm going to uh, defer the floor to Comptroller Henry. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning. I, I, I guess I'm going to address this to Mr. Herbert, but I will uh, also uh, thank uh, the, Mr. Lundy and the uh, EMBU office for their efforts on this. Um, I requested that this item be moved to non-routine because I'm intending to vote no on it. Uh, this vendor has a history of not complying with EMBU requirements for this contract, and it has been afforded multiple opportunities to come up with a plan previously to become compliant. Uh, in March of 2021, this contract came before the board with an increase of over $75,000. Kentec was not in compliance with EMBU goals then. We had multiple meetings with procurement, EMBU, and the police department, who was the primary end user at the time, and that increase was approved with the understanding that the vendor would take action to become compliant with EMBU. But more than a year later, Kentec is still saying that they will put a plan in place to comply in the future. Um, now, now the request for this increase is moving forward because DHR uh, needs the services. You say that there's no way to segment the background checking, but I, un, I'm unclear on how there is no way to segment it when it 
as I understand it, they're doing background checks so they could subcontract out to another firm a certified MBE that does background checks. They could subcontract out and just let the other firm do part of the work, which is how the MBU program works. Um, so I'm unclear as to why we would say that they can't do that. Um, and then finally, um, you know, rather than procurement rebidding these services, we're being asked to approve giving more work to um, a contractor who hasn't followed our requirements, isn't following our requirements, and frankly, isn't being held accountable for doing so unless we put a stop to it. So I'm inclined to vote no. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Comptroller. Um, I share some of the same sentiments that the Comptroller shares, um, but also more frankly to the administration, the inconsistency. Um, there was a minority um, owned business, uh, I believe um, specific to, um, was it asbestos removal? What's the, the protest that we had a couple weeks ago? It was a minority owned business based in Baltimore. The owner lived in Baltimore City and employed several Baltimoreans, and they had achieved the minority participation goal but was unable to find uh, a woman-owned business to include in their bid. They've done work for the city of Baltimore for several years. Uh, it's a national company uh, that we want to keep in the city of Baltimore, uh, and they simply asked to do the same thing that we're doing with Kintec, of providing them an opportunity to identify or help to identify from a market research analysis perspective a woman-owned company to support some of their work so they can meet the goals. Uh, they were immediately rejected uh, and lost that contract. So I guess from Ms. Mr. Lundy, um, from your perspective, what is the difference with that approach? And do you recall the particular example that I'm raising today? Do you know, remember that company's name? Yes, sir, I do. It was. Um uh, it was Mr. Lang, and uh, the name of his company is, I believe, Compliance Construction, if I'm that's recalling it, That's correctly. it, Compliance Construction. Yeah. Could you, to, quickly, could you tell us the difference of the approach that we took with that contract than what we're doing right now with Kintec? Yes, sir. So, um, first and foremost, with uh, Compliance Construction, uh, they were dealing with bid documents uh, and al although uh, when Mr. Lang uh, came before the board, he stated his efforts to get participation on the contract, that wasn't detailed to my office in a waiver. Um, so we did not have uh, adequate communication to judge whether that was sufficient good faith efforts for him to have tried to get that participation. Um, I did meet with Mr. Lang following, uh, you know, that, that Friday following the board's meeting. Um, we met for, I believe, uh, an hour and a half to discuss not only that contract, uh, uh, problems that he and other uh, MBEs are encountering with our procurement process in ways that I can assist him in the future when he's bidding on documents so that we can have that clarity and understanding um, so he does not end up in that situation again. Um, so that more so was a, uh, uh, an issue with the forms. Where we are with Kintech, of course, is obviously in contract participation. Um, with contract participation, we have the ability to have um, some understanding of the things that are being encountered during the performance of the contract. And I try to have a, a totality of circumstances understanding of the fact that a contractor that, that is on a contract does have additional time, may additionally have a, a time and opportunity to continue to come into compliance. Um, and typically, once somebody is on that contract, I'm trying to assist them in getting to compliance by any means that we can whether that's a substitution of somebody who's failing to perform an addition of, of additional subcontractors or just letting them know about other services that they could bring under the umbrella of the contract that would uh, count towards the participation goals. Um, I completely um, agree and understand with both uh, the position of you, Council President, and, and you, Mr. Comptroller, on this issue. Um, I'm surely not advocating for people to not achieve compliance and not uh, achieve the goals. Um, in this case, uh, I do not have the entire history of the contract. I've reviewed it, but I personally was not here. Um, and I have some hesitance to uh, uh, be overly critical of Kintec uh, because of the fact that uh, they received advisement from my office and then the person that sent that was then no longer there. 
um, with some of the follow up and communication. Um, so I'm I'm unclear and uncertain exactly um, the, the the actions um, and, and the diligence uh, that my office was able to take um, with communicating. So so that is in part why I am not um, taking a hard line towards them. Um, also, because he is an MBE prime uh, that has been awarded this contract, um, I do not want to uh, undercut his ability uh, to be able to try to get that uh, compliance. I also want to note that these multi-agency or citywide contracts are also very challenging with participation at times because the work is not always clearly attributed to one agency or the other, um, and the records are sometimes not kept in that way by, the, uh, by our vendor community. Um, so sometimes we have a difficulty um, in, in, in deciphering what is what, and also we have um, sometimes a disparity between the utilization of the agencies. Um, I know definitely um, at the time of the last compliance review from what I've gathered, um, they were definitely doing primarily BPD recruiting, um, and, it, and they do definitely have a sub that is limited to the Baltimore market area as opposed to being able to travel wherever the contract may take them for those services. And, and I do think that is something that would contribute some additional participation. Um, I, I definitely want everyone to understand that, that we want to see compliant uh, vendors on our contracts. We want everyone to take the goal seriously, but at the same time, um, I, I'm really trying to come from a place of fundamental fairness and understanding the totality of the circumstances so this honorable body can take into consideration whether it's appropriate for our public funds to go towards uh, continuing to utilize vendors uh, under circumstances such as this. And uh, Chief Lundy, we appreciate your due diligence and your responsiveness to this board, uh, specifically as it relates to issues uh, of concern like this. But when we talk about, again, you know, the difference between bidding and contract participation, definitely understand uh, where the approach is uh, when someone's already in a contract. I think the concern, and 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 I don't want to speak for the comptroller, um, but the foundation of his concern was based off of the fact that this is not the first time the city has been here with this particular contractor. Uh, and again, I guess my concern is there is a certain level of inconsistency um, when we look at, the, the, no, despite on what issue, despite on what part of the process that we're in, but when we look at uh, folks with similar uh, uh, problems and concerns, um, one being more egregious, and I'm not gonna stare and compare because again, I don't have all of the background on this, but one on the surface being more egregious uh, than other things that we've decided to go against in the past. So, you know, I do have major concerns with this. I still have major concerns with this. You know, obviously we wanna continue to support uh, minority businesses, um, but I think that it's also important that we um, we do it, uh, uh, we, we, we develop a certain level of consistency as it relates to the cure process. And I don't know, uh, is that from a legislative perspective or some policies and procedures perspective uh, through the agency, but I, I w my time on the board has seen some level of inconsistencies and I know you're working to clean that up. Mr. Comptroller, I believe you want the floor again. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I guess, well, first of all, Chief Lundy, that the fundamental fairness bit, you know, you know where to get me, right? I, I, I appreciate that. Um, but uh, the, 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 the one question I realize that I still have outstanding is if they had not been advised to not get themselves certified and they were already a certified MBE, would their ability to self-perform be sufficient to have met compliance for the MBE goals? For the MBE goals, I believe that would have been sufficient based on uh, of their ability to self-perform because they have been undertaking a considerable amount of work under the contract. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Mr. President, may, may, I, may I also <laughs> add uh, regarding your uh, uh, comments uh, about the cure procedures? Yes, sir. Uh, before we do that, could, can I ask a question, just follow a question regarding the self-performance? When yes, is sir. that acceptable and when, that's, when is it not? Um, so that just comes down to whether that is stated within the bid documents that they want to self-perform under the, on that contract. Um, and of course, they would have to be certified themselves by the city as an MBE or WBE to do so. But if that's um, stated within the bid documents, then that their work on the contract up to 50% of the value of all of the work that the prime does on the contract would be able to go towards that applicable goal, which may or may not in and of itself satisfy the MBE goal. 
Gotcha. It still may be possible Explo with Explo that Explo sale performance to need to add another uh, a vendor on the contract. Chief Lundy, could you give me a quick example of that 50%? Um, yes. So it would just so be say, that, say if it's a hundred thousand um, dollar contract. Right. So if it's a hundred thousand dollar contract, the uh, the prime uh, would be able to self perform up to fifty thousand dollars. And if my office, based on the overall amount of the contract, had set the goal at uh, eight percent MBE, which was the equivalent of let's say twenty thousand dollars, their ability to self perform would then fully satisfy the MBE goal. Now, is that is, is that discouraged? Uh, no, not at all. Um, it, it, it's just it's just up to that 50% of the overall value is the code limitation. But we encourage anybody that is already certified to self perform and get credit for their own work. Um, but it is limited in the code to allow us to continue to grow other uh, MBEs and WBEs with that process by them also taking part in the contract and serving as subs. Thank you. Um, now, I think you were going to go on to the cure process back to another yes. concern I had. Correct. So this is a this is a legislative issue um, within the city code. Currently, I was actually just um, corresponding with the controller's office this morning about another matter where uh, there, there is what most would deem or refer to as a minor irregularity within an MBU uh, participation form. That term, though, is very tightly defined within the reg MBU regulations and is not as broad as it is in the procurement regulations. Um, they are separate standards. There is the procurement uh, minor irregularities, but then there's also specifically MBU ones within our participation forms. And things such as failing to sign the forms um, is not considered a minor irregularity. Uh, the failure to put down a percentage that a subcontractor would work, these are all within the, the form instructions in our requirements for us to adequately understand uh, that there is a relationship between the prime and subcontractor and that they have agreed to perform up to that level. Um, but some of the things uh, uh, that, that, that may be, be, may be of concern uh, could be things that we could detail um, as minor irregularities when they do not specifically uh, go to the ability for us to ascertain whether the prime and sub are in fact going to work on the contract and have agreed to these percentages and dollar amounts. Thank you for that. Um, actually, uh, there is um some legislation drafted from a cure perspective. I'm going to ask Nikki Thompson from my office to, just to reach out to you to ensure that um, that portion of it is taken care of. Yes, please. I would love to assist. Thank, Thank you. you. At this time, I think the comptroller would like to uh, uh, address you again. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. There was one other question that I realized I should ask, which is um, in the description of this, uh, it was stated that uh, Kentech claimed that they were advised by the city not to bother getting certified. Um, is that an assertion that they have made or is that documented on either end? Do we have proof that um, somebody from city government told them not to bother getting certified? Sir, it is thus far an assertion uh, that Mr. Coates made to me uh, directly uh, during the course of one of our meetings. I have not um, asked him for written documentation. Um, I will say thus far, he would not be eligible for certification. Um, he, they are headquartered in, uh, in Chicago and they have offices throughout the country. So he has no current active operating office in Baltimore. So due to the pandemic, he did not take those steps. So he's not in a position as we sit here at this moment to be eligible for certification. Oh. But now that he understands from my advisement that if he had an office here, he would in fact be eligible. He's going to be taking the steps to move forward is what he has represented to me to seek certification uh, and establish a Mr. Mr. active Con operating okay. office in Baltimore. And Mr. Controller, mm -hmm. that's what I was saying, the glaring difference yeah, with yeah. what we saw a couple of weeks ago of a business that's set up in Baltimore residents of Baltimore, employees of Baltimore has had several years on that contract that lost the contract because of not the MBE, but because um, they were unable to identify the WBE. Um, you know, that, that's the inconsistency that I'm talking about. And, and it, 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 go, it goes a little deeper of what we've talked about. And I, and I know the mayor is supportive of this. I know the comptroller is supportive of this is, um, you know, there's always been a mantra of the city of the lowest price, the lowest bidder kind of wins, right? And not that that is written anywhere uh, in code because it's responsive and Ms. Brown is going to help me with all of the technical language of it. 
Um, but again, when we have a company that is employing residents of the city of Baltimore, set up in the city of Baltimore, has partnerships with Baltimore City Public Schools, uh, their bid should weigh uh, and to bring in a little weight other than just the lowest price. And I think that we have to continue to do a better job. I know the administration uh, in uh, city administration is shorter, uh, has been focusing on procurement. I know on the council we've uh, passed legislation, have pending legislation on procurement, uh, but it's about developing a more perfect process um, that's going to benefit the city holistically. Um, uh, and you know that's all that we're here talking about. So uh, with that, are there any additional questions or concerns from members of the board uh, for Chief Lundy or Director Herbert? Hearing and seeing none at this time, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. 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 So if you could please note that there's a three, two, one passage. Um, uh, three is uh, an affirmative of uh, and, and two, um, uh, nays. Uh, this item is approved. Uh, we're going to move on uh, to the next item. Thank you uh, to uh, Chief Lundy as well as Director Herbert. Uh, the next item on non-routine agenda can be found on page 116, number one, Bureau of Procurement, B5000-6466, <coughs> Street Tree Supply Delivery Planting Maintenance uh, for spring and fall of 2022. Again, a protest was received from Mr. Robert Fulton DeShield, Esquire, representing Lorenz Incorporated. Um, I believe, Mr. Um, just to f full transparency, um, Mr. DeShield was, is unable to participate today. I believe there will not be a representative from Lorenz on today. They originally asked for a deferral. This is the second time that they've asked for a deferral. The board was willing to defer before. Unfortunately, um, there are not the votes on the board today uh, to do that deferral, and that's why we're proceeding on. Uh, on behalf of procurement, we have acting um, procurement officer, Ms. Keisha Brown, uh, to speak on a contract. Ms. Brown, the floor is yours. Your title okay. keeps changing. I'm sorry? Your title keeps changing on my script. Oh, I'll always be Keisha, though. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, President Mosby, Mr. Mayor, and other honorable members, and Comptroller Henry. Um, thank you for our opportunity to um, speak to you this morning. I am Keisha Brown. I'm the Acting City Purchasing Agent. And um, the Bureau of Procurement comes to the board to ask for an award of solicitation, B5000-6466, three uh, street tree supply, delivery, planting, and maintenance, spring and fall 2022 to Baltimore um, Tree Trust, Inc. This bid was opened on February 16th, 2022, and the Bureau uh, recommends the award to the lowest responsive, responsible bidder. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Um, before you leave, could you, uh, just in all transparency, we're going to move on. Um, do you know this side of the protester? Could you kind of articulate whatever their concerns are for the record? Yes, I and, can. And, and I guess address or speak to them. Yes, I can. Um, I have some screenshot, and unfortunately, the um, printer was a little cantankerous. But inside City Buy, um, you can review the bid and the full process. And on our administrative side of procurement, we can drill down more to see the questions, answers, and things of that nature just to let the public know. So the first um, uh, protester's concern was that we issued an amendment after the bid was opened or at some time uh, inappropriately. So um, basically there's a difference between amendment and addendum. So an addendum we use in the bid solicitation to clarify when something substantively has changed, maybe a bid opening or what have you, and it's required to be signed by the city purchasing agent. Um, amendment is a button inside a feature inside city by that allows the bidder to create or respond to a question. So those two are um, the uh, documents that I think may have been misconstrued in terms of the issuance. So on uh, January 31st, we had a buyer, uh, fortunately got promoted and left the city. We continued the bid for continuity and assigned it to another buyer. Uh, one of the suppliers asked, can we have the pricing of the previous bid, which was B5,000, uh, 4509. The buyer said yes, and maybe in his haste, did not post the uh, pricing. So the buyer who was assigned to further carry out the bid to its bid opening 
uh, noticed that he did not add that. So what he did was he clicked on the amendment and attached the pricing. Somewhere in City by a city a, a, a feature of the system, it did not push out the notification. So if you look at the emailing in the protest, that is not from the desk of the buyer. That was the system. So I went in and verified that it was appropriately issued. The only one who stand to gain uh, any benefit of that error was the incumbent. The protester because they were the only ones who knew the previous bid prices so even though that situation happened after the fact and was not um, in violation of the bid no one was allowed to uh, revisit their bidding we properly move forward with the evaluation as the uh, bid had closed the board appreciates your detailed uh, clarification of that issue at this point are there any additional questions or concerns oh I'm are you here for Lorenz Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were here. Uh, at this point, are there any additional questions or concerns from members of this board? Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Brown. Uh, we'll call you back up if we One need. more point. One more point, okay. Um, so the other one was MBEWBE. Do you want to move forward with that or you want me to wait? Um, I'm happy to do that. No, you go ahead and provide this. Okay, so the other uh, protest was that the uh, awardee that we're recommending today did not have their MBE, WBE um, uh, documents in their package, Baltimore Tree Trust. And there was some implication that maybe someone allowed them to add additional documents to the bid. Um, this is incorrect. We verified through the original bid submission, which we received from the Comptroller's Office once the bids are open. The Comptroller's Office maintained what we asked for, the three copies that sometimes we use in the evaluation team. They maintain a copy. So it may be in fact that they went and they did schedule an appointment, I have the dates, I won't go into that, and properly reviewed the bids. However, uh, there's no evidence to support that they brought this to anyone's attention where we potentially could have correct that. However, I went back and verified in the original package that they were a responsive and responsible bidder and that they uh, submitted to the city all required documents for the bid solicitation and offer. Thank you for your preparedness and presentation to this board. At this time, uh, the um, representative from Lorenz, if you could please uh, state your name uh, and your role here today. Um, the board is willing to listen to your formal protest. Good morning, board. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you all. My name is Ben Hall, and I'm the director of operations for uh, Lorenz Incorporated. Uh, I'm certainly not a lawyer. I was asked to be here by Mr. Deschel uh, as a witness, and uh, I really wasn't prepared to kind of run this on my own. So, we'll, we'll take your time. We're here to listen. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as part of our protest, uh, on March 9th, 2022, at 1 o'clock, myself and Mr. Dashell went to the Comptroller's office to review the original bids that were submitted for this contract. I had previously reviewed the bids by myself, but I had I went with uh, and I looked at a duplicate bid. I did not look at the original. So when Mr. Dashell and I went again to review the bids together, he specifically asked to view the original bids. There was no participation form for Carter Landscaping, who Baltimore Tree Trust is using as their MBE. There was no participation form or any other certified MBE forms included in the original Baltimore Tree Trust bid. The MBE participation form for Carter Landscaping reviewed by uh, MBU must have been improperly added to the Baltimore Tree Trust bid after the bids were opened. In addition, I wanted to mention that it appears that Baltimore Tree Trust does not employ anyone licensed as a tree expert by the Maryland Department of Natural Resources as required to perform the bulk of work under this contract. The Maryland Department of Natural Resources uh, explains that all tree care professionals practicing in Maryland must obtain a license. Without a license, they may not practice or advertise tree care services. That was the, the bulk of our protest. Um, there's more to it, but 
I feel like I feel like I feel like that's uh that's the meat and potatoes of our argument. Lorenz Incorporated was the only bidder to properly complete all MBWBE documents and should be the awardee. Thank you. Uh, that's a pretty bold uh, assertion. Uh, so just for the record, and we're all on the same page, uh, it is your belief that when you had the opportunity of reviewing the original bid documents uh, that you have reason to believe that um, the MBE participation documents were placed um, post bid submittal? All I can say with absolute certainty is that they were not in the bid when I reviewed them. All right, uh, Comptroller, do you want anyone to speak on behalf of that? Or Well, first of all, I would say that um, Ms. Brown already spoke to the fact that what we keep in the Comptroller's office it's not the original bids, those get sent back. We keep a duplicate um, that is just Xeroxed of the original bids. Um, one of the things that I will say is that um, the allegations from Lorenz through Mr. DeShield's um, protest have caused us to do some uh, reconsidering of how we um, run the process of letting people review the file we have um, because um, as far as we knew, we had all the documents in that file. Um, by the point at which uh, our attention was called to the fact that there was a form missing in our copy, in our file, um, that the file had already been viewed by a member of the public without necessarily the supervision that we need to be providing to ensure that documents aren't removed from our files by members of the public who are reviewing the file. And we're going to be um, changing um, our procedures to uh, accommodate that, but that's kind of moot here because the original bid documents which were not in our custody have already been, it's already been testified that they contain the, um, the appropriate EMBU form and I believe Chief Lundy is available here to confirm that if need be. Um, so that's kind of what I would say in response. No, thank you for that uh, explanation. Um, I guess on behalf of, uh, I'm sorry, what's your name, sir? Ben Hall. Mr. Hall? Yes. Um, I guess on behalf of the concerns regarding the MBE participation and goals, uh, can someone from the administration speak to that? Mr. Hall, if you could please have a seat. Um, sure. uh, and I'll call you right back up. No problem. I guess on behalf of the MBE, uh, WBE concerns that Mr. Hall has raised, um, does someone from administration would like to speak on behalf of that? I'm not sure if Chief Lundy or? Uh, yes, and thank you again. Uh, when we receive the package, after we review it for the uh, specs and the pricing, we forward those documents to Chief Lundy and his team reviewed them to determine if they have actually met the requirements for the MBE, WBE goals set. And it was determined that they met the requirements? Correct. Right. Uh, I don't know if anyone's here to speak on behalf of this, but another assertion made by Lorenz was that um, the organization that's being ultimately uh, suggested to be awarded this uh, does not have the appropriate subject matter expertise um, I believe Deputy Solicitor uh, would like to speak on behalf of that. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, it is my understanding that that is not a requirement, and I believe uh, Laura Simon is on the line here um, stating that as, as, as well, that there there is not a requirement. I, th I think I see her on the line. Um, Chief Simon, are you are you? She was are you available? Called her name, and then I just. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes. So, no, so, Derek, this, uh, so this is her, you, uh, you're going to hand it over to Ms. Simon? Yes, I would like to hand it, if she's there. All right, Ms. Simon, if uh, you have okay. the floor at this point. Thank you. Uh, good 
Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, good morning, honorable members of the board. Uh, there is nothing in the solicitation that we have seen that requires, as stated by the protest, Lorenz, uh, that there be a licensed tree expert employed by the Maryland Department of Natural Resource. And the Bureau of Procurement has confirmed this as well. I guess uh, certified by the Maryland State, right? Not, not employed. I just want to make the record right. Make sure the record is right. right. Let, Th there's not a requirement for someone to be certified. I believe you said employee. Uh, the protest says employed. Oh, okay. Mr. Hall said certified. Uh, was that in, in the protest? Is that um, I think there's, there's a clear distinction between employed or certified. I, I believe you said certified in your presentation. I mean, because obviously uh, a person that's working for Lorenz wouldn't be employed by the state as well at the same time. So that's why I'm leaning towards that the idea is to be certified and maybe there was a mistake in your protest. Yes, sir. Uh, certified, yeah. It, it appears that Baltimore Tree Trust does not employ anyone certified as a Maryland tree expert. Yeah, so I guess back to you, Ms. Simon, is that a requirement uh, that they employ someone certified? And if not a requirement, is that something that for the best interest of the city is, is important? That is not a requirement that's in the solicitation. And I would defer to Rec and Parks as to whether that would be in the best interest of the city. Is Rec, Rec and Parks is not on here, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and I don't think we have anyone uh, who has the skill set to probably answer uh, that. Um, Obviously, Mr. Hall, can you speak uh, to the importance of that? Um, I am not a tree expert. Um, I've known to have a green thumb here and there, <laughs> but it's kind of hit or miss. Sure. But when we talk about uh, that certification, what is it? Why does that matter? Um, why was that germane to your protest? No problem. Um, as a, a Maryland tree expert, uh, you have to take uh, an exam, a uh, lengthy exam, on all aspects of tree care and maintenance. Uh, I believe it pertains uh, to this particular bid because this bid not only has street tree planting, but it also has care and maintenance. Uh, it, it really covers, this license covers all aspects of tree care, planting, uh, maintenance, pruning, uh, there's a lot of aspects that I could go into in regards to tree planting, uh, and this this license is um, it's something that's very serious, and I feel it's very important. Um, it's uh, it's not just a simple quiz. Uh, I took it myself, and I remember it was quite tedious. So, and I guess the assertion that the tree trust they they do not have an employee uh, with the certification. How is that verified? Uh, the Department of Natural Resources, uh, you can locate a tree expert on their website. Uh, you can search their name. So you can search employee names. You can also search uh, through the company or the, the title of the business, Baltimore Tree Trust. Um, and it's public information. So with your investigation, you determine um, from the information you had that they do not employ a person with that certification, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, we'll, uh, so we've talked about um, the assertion around um, documents being added post bid. We talked about the MBE, WBE issue, and now we're talking about the certification issue. I believe I see the hand raised of uh, Laura Simon. Um, Ms. Simon, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the solicitation does require that each bidder submit the following information. It lists several uh, requirements. One is a copy of an International Society of Arboriculture Arborist Certificate. I apologize if I mispronounced that. And in the response to the protest from Baltimore Tree Trust, they specifically state that they provided not one, but uh, two 
uh, copies of ISA certified arborists with over 15 years of direct experience in urban forestry who will assist the services of Baltimore Tree Trust. Got you. And, and, it and they have the attached those to their, they have not attached those, I'm sorry. But they have referenced it. They, they didn't attach, but they referenced that they, they do have two members. And, and my assumption is that was sufficient uh, from a city uh, perspective to ensure that uh, we're, we're getting adequate service uh, on this particular bid, correct? I, I believe that it, that would be reviewed by a procurement and the responsiveness and responsibility evaluation. Thank you so much, Ms. Simon. I will see the procurement. And, and correct, I concur with uh, Attorney Simon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, at this point, are there any questions or concerns from any members of this board uh, to procurement, uh, to law, uh, or even to the protester Lorenz? Hearing and seeing none at this time, I will take a motion. So moved. Second. So moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This item is approved. Thank you so much, Mr. Hall, for coming in uh, and providing your testimony. Uh, the next item on non-routine agenda is a walk-on item uh, and was noted by our amazing clerk at the top of the meeting. It is on page 178, Bureau of Procurement Cooperative Agreement. On behalf of procurement, we have Acting Procurement Office, Sir, uh, Ms. Keisha Brown to speak to this contract. Ms. Brown, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning again, honorable members of the board. The Bureau of Procurement is requesting that um, the board approves the recommendation for the cooperative. It is a uh, van and SUV uh, contract procured under the state of Maryland. We're asking to ride the contract. Thank you for that. Um, I would assume that since we're riding it, that means that we take on the state MBE, WBE, goals for this or, how, or was it waived or how does that work if it was such a uh, requirement in the contract we would follow it follow it to its t yeah um, where it becomes a little negotiable is if the city decided if they wanted to pursue um adding goals to it um and the supplier would have to agree are we adding goals to this or do we know no sir we're not we're not um this from a state perspective are there goals in place for it or no no sir it's not and how long is this contract that we're going to be riding on? Um, I didn't know that this was going to non-routine, so I don't have it in front of me. Um, Do we know how long that this is going to be in place? I think it's 2025. We don't know. It we're should looking be in to the see letter. I was just given the start date of yeah. March 1. March 1, yeah. Um, I can certainly provide that information to you, but it is not controlled by the city of Baltimore. We can decide not to continue, but the actual Correct. term is decided by the awarding lead agency, which was the state of Maryland. Gotcha. Now, what's the process if we determine that we wanted to, in concurrent, come up with our own um, process to select a vendor? Because that's what I typically have asked the administration to do in the past. I can remember um, there was a pretty large um, small roof contract that we did something very similar on mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of this administration. Um, what is the process of us, uh, I guess, formally requesting that we uh, concurrent, in concurrent, develop our own process to ensure that we do have MBE, WBE participation for something as important as this? Well, as a, uh, the lead agency, and if we participated uh, with the contract, we could certainly uh, have their lead agency include that in the advertisement and and include Baltimore as a cooperative partner. And a lot of time folks say cooperative and piggyback, we're actually piggybacking Piggyback off, off of it. this cooperative yeah. contract. But, but what I'm saying is we would have to initiate our own process at this point and then we can sever ourselves from that contract and have our own contract. Uh, I think that's a legal question, but of a legal mind, we would have to follow our advertising for competitive bidding. Understood. But okay. we do have the rider clause in our contracts where other jurisdictions can piggyback off of Baltimore's uh, awarded contracts. Got you. And just for the record, the mayor has provided information um, that he received. It's, I believe it expires March 1st, 2023. Okay. So it's Thanks. not that long. Um, but we, I guess, need to figure out how we move forward with that. All right. At this point, are there any additional questions or concerns from members of the board? Hearing and seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. 
It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, this item is approved. Um, the next walk on item uh, is um, an routine. Um, it was noted by a clerk, can be found on page 179, number four, Department of Public Works, Office of Engineering and Construction, SC992R. At this time, I'd like to recognize um, Deputy uh, Director of DPW, uh, Mr. Matthew Garbach, to present on behalf of DPW. Mr. Garbach, the floor is yours. Morning, Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Controller, honorable members of the Board of Estimates. I'm Matt Garbark, Deputy Director for the Department of Public Works. I'm joined today by Mr. Tim Wolf. He is our Chief of Engineering and Construction, and he'll be able to answer any technical or, st or specific questions about this project. This is a request that the Board approve a notice of letting re-advertising Sanitary Contract 992R. This would involve rehabilitating and improving our egg-shaped digesters at the Back River Wastewater Treatment Plant. This is the exact same notice of letting that was approved by this board in late May. The bids were due last week. However, we received no bids. We believe that is because this is a rather complex and complicated project, and there was little more than a month for vendors and contractors to develop bids for such a complex project. This is a top priority of ours, as well as the state's, in having solids handling and treatment at the plant resolved for full compliance going forward. We wanted to get this back on the street for advertising again as soon as possible. This time, it's the exact same terms of the contract and the project. This time, we're going to have it open for two months rather than one month. We believe that'll give ample opportunity to have vendors and contractors develop those bids. So uh, DPW is requesting the board approve this authorization to let us advertise this bid. I'd be happy to answer any questions or Mr. Wolf if there's any specific questions. Now from a technical perspective uh, in some of the media coverage with Department of Environment from a state perspective, this is urgent because this addresses some of those priorities that are baked into that. Is that accurate? That's correct. Yes, sir. Thank you for communicating that to this board. Are there any additional questions or concerns from members of the board for DPW? Hearing and seeing none at this time, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And all those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, this item is approved. Thank you, Mr. Garbark. The next item on our routine agenda can be found on page 180, uh, Baltimore City Department of Health Provider Agreement and with connection with through Life Incorporated, fiscal agent for Minority AIDS Initiative. At this time, I'd like to recognize someone from the health department. I believe we have someone online. Is that accurate? I believe Ms. Thompson, yeah, cause, uh, we, we did do that um, combination of the, the eight at the beginning, so I'm not sure if uh, Ms. Thompson um, was under the impression that they were all lumped together. Is there someone on behalf of the administration, we understand and know how important it is. I know I've had the ability to kind of review this, um, and I know Comptroller Henry, he does his due diligence, has reviewed it as well. Um, is, is someone uh, just from the administration to just quickly speak on this? Uh, Mr. Shorter, you are the ultimate uh, professional who is always ready to ad lib. <laughs> you can just let us know that um, this is a requirement from the federal government uh, yeah. for July 1st, uh, and that's why uh, these important services are being read in today, right? That is correct. Thank you so Mr. much. President. So with that, I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> so moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And all those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This item is approved. The next item on our routine agenda is another walk-on uh, that was listed by our clerk. It's 181, Baltimore City Department of Health Provider Agreement in connection, oh, uh, sorry, no. Yeah, it is. In connection with Through Life uh, Incorporated, fiscal agent uh, for Minority AIDS Initiative at this time, I'd like to recognize uh, Chief um, Admin uh, Officer Shorter. Um, I believe that this is in the same posture as the last one, uh, Mr. Shorter. 
Yes, Mr. President, that is correct. Thank you so much, Mr. CAO. With that, uh, I'll entertain a motion at this time. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And all those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This item is approved. Uh, there's no new business before the desk or this board. We will be in recess until bid opening at noon. Uh, the Board of Estimates will be in recess on July 6th, and the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Estimates will occur on Wednesday, July 20th, a day after the election at 9 a.m. So remember, July 19th is Election Day. Uh, please uh, tell Lottie, Dottie, and everybody uh, that this is an important <laughs> election for us to turn out. At this time, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in uh, Baltimore please stay safe we absolutely love you good afternoon everyone and welcome to Baltimore City bid opening for June 29th 2022 I am Celeste Amato I'm the clerk for the Board of Estimates and I'm joined by my colleagues Jim Knighton Michael Williams and I was here with Sherelle Holly, who you'll probably see pop in and out, trying to help us keep a very large bid opening straight today. So um, without further ado, we will get started. Thank you, Mr. Comptroller, for documenting the enormous response to this bid. <laughs> so how many total openings are there? There are, hold please. I believe we have five bids. And this, what you see, is just one. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. okay. So this morning I do have one addendum to announce. Bid, uh, this bid is for the Procurement, Bureau of Procurement, B5006614, Citywide Police Requested Towing Services. There is an addenda that's been issued and the opening date has changed to July 20th, 2022. First up today, we have um, our first of five openings that were scheduled for today. First bid is Procurement B5000-6699, Technical Service for Liquid Oxygen Plants. And I am sad to share that there have been no bids received for that item today. That was Contract B5000-6699, no bids received. Next up is uh, Bureau of Procurement, contract number B5006477. This is a bid for enterprise support staffing services. And today we are opening the technical portion of this bid only. And what that means is I'm not going to be sharing any numbers. Those will be opened at a future date. We'll be sharing the respondents. And for those of you who are wondering about the many stacks up here today, <laughs> these are all responses to this particular bid. So we will be working our way through um, pretty meticulously through these piles. Apologize if it's not super exciting for everyone, but we're making sure that the list that we ultimately published by close of business today did not miss anybody who has given us a response today. So without further ado, again, we are opening B5000-6477. And Jim, I think you're gonna start at one end or the other and mm -hmm. we'll work our way through. First proposal is from Trigen, T R I G Y N. That's Trigen Technologies Incorporated? Yes. Got it. You guys want to start to clear those as we, okay. Next proposal is from Biff Group Technologies. Biff Group Technologies, got it. Next proposal is from Akiva Technologies, A-K-I-V-A. Got it, Akiva Technologies, LLC. Yes. Next proposal is VTEC Solution Inc. VTEC Solutions Inc. 
Or is it solution? Solution. Singular. Singular. Thank you. Next proposal is from Booker DeMaio, LLC. That's B-O-O-K-E-R. Second word, D-I-M-A-I-O, LLC. Booker DeMaio, LLC. The next proposal is from Prelude Systems Incorporated. Prelude Systems Inc. I think we had VTech already. These are some extra copies of VTech Solution. Um, I think. Yeah, okay. Let, um, sure, we'll make sure they marry up with what we just put in the cart. That was VTech Solution. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. The next proposal is from Moten Tate Incorporated. Moten Tate Inc. Uh -huh. M-O-T-E-N, second word, T-A-T-E, Incorporated. Next proposal is from Shorewise Consulting, S-H-O-R-E, W-I-S-E. S-H-O-R-E, all one word. Yes. Shorewise Consulting, Inc. Yes. The next proposal is from U-V-S. Hold on just one moment, Jim. Sorry, I just want to make sure I highlight it. Okay, go ahead, please. Next proposal is from UVS Infotech, LLC. Letter U, letter V, letter S, Infotech, LLC. LLC. UVS Infotech, LLC. The next proposal is from Apex Systems, A-P-E-X Systems. Is that LLC, did you say? No. Oh, okay. Not yet. The next proposal is from Theta, T-H-E-T-A, LLC. Theta, LLC. Yes. Next proposal is from CompuVision Consulting, C-O-M-P-U hyphen V-I-S-I-O-N Consulting. Um, hold on just one moment. Um, my list was based on whether we could read the envelope. <laughs> so I, I just want to get the name right before we move on. Okay, CompuVision Consulting. Got it. Next proposal is from V Group Incorporated, letter V Group Incorporated. Got it. Next proposal is from Cynet Systems, C-Y-N-E-T Systems, Inc. Cynet was all caps, yes? Uh, C-Y-N-E-T. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next proposal is from DK Consulting. Got it. Next proposal is from Applied Technology Services. Got it. Okay, that's DK. We already had that one. The next proposal is from Trifacta Inc. T R Y F A C T A Inc. Got it. Next proposal is from Ohm Systems Incorporated. That's O H M Systems Incorporated. Got it. The next uh, proposal is from Compunel Software Group Inc. C O M P U N N E L D B A Compunel Incorporated. Got it.
Next proposal is from SRS Consulting, Inc. Got it. Next proposal is from BGSF Professional LLC, DBA Vision Technology Services. Well, I'm glad you said that because I didn't have the first one. What was the first name? It was uh, letter B, letter G, letter S, letter F, all caps. BGSF Professional LLC, DBA okay. Vision Technology Services. Okay. Got it. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. The next proposal is from Full Circle Solutions, Inc. Got it. The next proposal is from Instant Serve LLC, I N S T A N T Capital S E R V E LLC. Got it. The next proposal is from Data Man, D A T A M A N U S A LLC. Got it. Next, uh, let's see, this is Instant Serve. So, we've already had that. These are, did we have Instant? I read Instant Serve, yeah. Okay. Next proposal is from CrowdPlat, C R O W D Capital P L A T Inc. Got it. The next proposal is from Tech Systems, T E K Systems. Got it. The next proposal is from Crasson, K R A S A N. Consulting Services, Inc. Crasson Consulting Services, Inc. Got it. The next proposal is from Cogent Infotech Corporation, C-O-G-E-N-T, all caps, Infotech Corporation. Got it. The next proposal is from Mind Pros, Inc. M I N D P R O S with P R O S in all caps, Inc. Got it. The next proposal is from InfoWay Solutions. Got it. The next proposal is from Stack Nexus. S T A C K Capital N E X U S Inc. Stack Nexus Inc. Got it. Did we do cloud? What, what was it? Cloud consulting. Did we do cloud consulting? We have not. The next proposal is from Realistic Computing Incorporated. Re Realistic Computing Incorporated. This is realistic computing, so that's a, this is yep. a duplicate. That whole pile of them. Oh, that's, okay. 
Did we do some uh, enterprise support? Staffing. No, that's who we did. That's what stack next because we did that one. It's this one. Okay. The next proposal is from CCS Global Tech. CCS Global Tech. You have their name spelled out. Is that Cloud Consulting Services? Or is that California Creative Solutions? CCS, that's a Global Tech. The name was something else. Was. Yes, they gave their full name on the, on the box. Is there another bid under that? Yes. Um, no, I mean, give me a copy. California Creative. Yes, it's ca CCS is California it's had to be one of Creative these two. Solutions, Inc. Um, yeah. Inc. And yes. I'll put. S yeah. Good. Okay, that was Cal. Yeah, let me give you this back, Sherelle, for the for your community control over there. So that was California Creative Solutions. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you haven't done this one either. The next proposal is from Sigmund and Summerfield Associates Inc. Sigmund and Summerfield Associates Inc. Got it. Oh, no, he has it in his hand. The, the next proposal is from Skyline Technology Solutions, LLC. Got it. I thought we were both grabbing the same one. Are we? Yeah, this is Sigmund and Summerfield, which I just read. Okay, I'm going to stay over here. The next proposal is from U.S. Tech Solutions, Inc. U.S. Tech Solutions, Inc. Got it. The next proposal is from HonorVet Technologies, H-O-N-O-R capital V-E-T Technologies. Um, Jim, I originally on their packaging, I had them as Techno Staff LLC doing business as Honor Vet. Should I be reversing that, or do you see any? Oh, yeah, here it is. You're right. Techno Staff LLC DBA Honor Vet Technologies. Okay. I just want to make sure I list them in a way that'll be recognizable, folks. Yeah. Got it. Next proposal is from Barrow Consulting Inc. Got it. The next proposal is from Cloud Consulting Services, Inc. Got it. Okay. I think we read Cogent Infotech already. We did. They are accounted for. The next proposal is from Agisol, LLC. That's A-G-I-S-O-L, LLC. Got it. The next proposal is from Business Integra Technology Solutions, Incorporated. Got Bus it. Business Integra Technology Solutions, Incorporated. We did Infogenie, right? No. The next proposal is from Infogeni Incorporated. That's I N F O J I N I Incorporated. The next proposal is from Twenty Second Century Technologies, Inc. That's 22ND Century Technologies, Inc. Got it. This last one.
The last proposal is from Kindrill, K-Y-N-D-R-Y-L. Got that. And I'm looking for Saragor Incorporated? Yes, there's okay. one more. Saragor Incorporated, S-C-R-I. You had to wait to the very end. T-O-R <laughs> Incorporated. Yes, that's the final one. Saragor Incorporated. Did everybody in the audience hear their company? Is there anybody else? Oh. All right, I'm going to run through the list one more time, and this should be roughly in alphabetical <coughs> order. Um, I believe we've accounted for all bids received for this item this morning. Again, this is contract number B5000-6477, and we have proposals, and we're sharing the names only today because we, we are opening technical proposals only today. And those respondents are 22nd Century Technologies, Agasol LLC, forgive me for mispronouncing all these cool tech company names, Akiva Technologies LLC, Apex Systems, Applied Technology Services, Barrow Consulting Services Inc., Bith Group Technologies, Booker DeMaio LLC, Business Integra Technology Solutions Inc., California Creative Solutions Inc., Cloud Consulting Services Inc., Cogent Infotech Corporation, CompuNel Inc., CompuVision Consulting, CrowdPlat, Signet Systems Inc., DK Consulting LLC, Dataman USA LLC, Full Circle Solutions Incorporated, InfoGenie Incorporated, InfoA Solutions LLC, Instant Serve LLC, Razen Consulting Services Inc., Kindrill, Mind Pros Inc., Motent Tate Inc., Ohm Systems Inc., Prelude Systems Inc., Realistic Computing Inc., Saragor Inc., Sigmund and Summerfield Associates Inc., Skyline Technology Solutions LLC, SRS Consulting Inc., Stack Nexus Inc., Shorewise Consulting Inc., Techno Staff LLC, doing business as Honor Vet Technology, Technology, Tech Systems, Theta LLC, Trigen Technologies Inc., Trifacta Inc., U.S. Tech Solutions Inc., UVS Infotech LLC, V Group Inc., V Tech Solution Inc., and Vision Technology Services also does business as BGSF Professional LLC. So um, for folks following this bid, what happens next is these technical proposals are referred to the agency for review, um, and a date will be set for the price proposals to be opened. So um, we will be spending all afternoon organizing these <laughs> so that they can be transported to the agency, so stay tuned. Um, on procurement's website and for information about the price proposal opening and feel free to folks stay with us if you'd like for the next couple of bid openings thank you, very much. Thank you. it's nice to see people live <laughs> <laughs> our next bid up today is for the department of general services and it is contract number gs 21814r and this is for the Northwood Branch Library Roof Replacement. I believe we have three bids today for this item. And Jim's going to tell me what the first one is. The first bidder is Rough Roofing and Sheet Metal, Inc. Total bid price, $439,824. And bid bond is included. Do we have um, copies? We I didn't even attempt to check the number of copies for all of these yet. Yes. Uh, so we have an original and one copy. We have, hang on a second. Okay. Yeah, we have an original and one copy. All right, uh, the next 
bidder is Swain Enterprises, LLC. Base bid, $350,000. Bid bond is included. 350 even? Yes. Okay, I'm going to repeat the number back to you. 350,000.00. Yes. And we have an original and one copy. Okay. The next bit, uh, let's see, that's rough roofing again. Just make sure. Yeah, and I think there are proposals from each of these for each of the contracts coming up. Okay, the ne uh, next propose uh, next bid is from Allstate Contractor Incorporated. Total bid price four hundred eighty three thousand one hundred thirty five dollars. That number was four eight three comma one three five point zero zero. Yes. And is there a bid bond? Yes. Original and one copy. Let me just double check. We have a c several unopened envelopes here, so I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah, take your time. Yeah. Do you want me to read the contract number out again, Jim? No, it's okay. We're on uh, GS21814R. Yep. Yes. Okay, continuing with GS21814R, the next bidder is Coal Roofing Company Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Total bid price $674,500. That number was 674,500.00. Yes. Any other bidders for this item? That is the last. Six, one, six, one, five. Okay. Yes, that's. Those are all the bids okay. for this solicitation. So we have four for this item. The one contractor, I couldn't. We couldn't tell who the. It was on the envelope. That's why I didn't have the name. But I'm going to read the names and numbers again for folks that are following this bid. We have bids from the following companies for contract number GS21814R. This is being bid for the Department of General Services. And this is for the Northwood Branch Library roof replacement. The bidders are as follows. Coal Roofing Incorporated, their bid amount was $674,500. Yeah. That was 674,500.00. Yes. Rough Roofing and Sheet Metal Incorporated, their bid amount was $439,824. That again is 439,824.00. Swain Enterprise, their bid amount was $350,000. Again, that number is 350,000.00. And the final bidder was Allstate Contractor Inc. And the bid amount was $483,135. That was 483,135.00. Yes. Our next bid opening for today is, again, from Department of General Services for contract number GS21815. Is that the one you pulled up next, Jim? Yeah, again, we have a couple envelopes for this that were not opened yet. So. This is GS21815 Hamilton Branch Library Roof Replacement. 
and um, Jim's opening those envelopes now and getting that organized for us to share out loud. Yeah. Okay, the first bidder is Allstate Contractor Incorporated. Bid amount $494,800. Bid bond is included. Um, would you repeat that amount? I'm sorry, I was having trouble hearing. $494,800. $800. Okay, and that was Allstate Contractor Inc. Yes. We have an original and one copy. The next bidder is Cole Roofing Company, Inc. Mm -hmm. Total bid price uh, $797,500. That's 797, comma, 500.00. The next bidder is Swain Enterprises, LLC. Bid price $350,000. Bid bond is included. We have an original and one copy. The last bidder is Rough Roofing and Sheet Metal Incorporated. Bid amount $449,650. Bid bond is included. Original and one copy. Great. I'm going to read through those responders for proposals again. For contract number GS21815, Hamilton Branch Library Roof Replacement, we have the following bids. Coal Roofing, Inc., $797,500, that was 797,500.00. Rough Roofing and Sheet Metal Incorporated, $449,650. Again, that number is 449,650.00. Swain Enterprises, uh, Swain Enterprise, sorry, $350,000. Again, that number, 350,000.00. And Allstate Contractor Inc., $494,800. That number again is 494,800.00. Yes. Okay. Next up is our final opening for today General Services, contract number GS21816R, the Brooklyn Branch Library Roof Replacement. First bidder is Allstate Contractor Incorporated. Bid amount 555000 One second, Jim, because I didn't have them on this list yet. Allstate Contractor Inc. And mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. Bid amount $555,865. Got it. Bid bond is included. We have an original plus one copy. Next bidder is Swain Enterprises, LLC. Bid amount $350,000. Bid bond is included. We have an original plus one copy. Next bidder is Rough Roofing and Sheet Metal Incorporated. Bid amount $494,208. Bid bond is included. We have an original plus one copy.
The next bidder is Cole Roofing Company Incorporated. Bid amount $797,500. Bid bond is included. We have an original plus one copy. Those are all the solicit uh, the bids for this solicitation. Okay. So again, this was for Department of General Services, contract number GS21816R, uh, Brooklyn Branch Library Roof Replacement. And the bidders were Coal Roofing, Inc., $797,500. That number again, 797,500.00. Rough Roofing and Sheet Metal, Inc., $494,208. <coughs> Again, 494,208.00. Swain Enterprise, their bid amount was $350,000, 350,000.00. And our final bidder was Allstate Contractor, Inc., $555,865. And again, that amount was 555,865.00. And that is our final opening for today. And now we're going to figure out how to get all this paper organized and back into my office. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks to our whole team for helping um, with this bid today. We appreciate all the extra hands. And thanks for tuning in. Have a good one, Baltimore. <laughs>